minister, Reverend Charles Danvers, other members of the clergy, members of the bereaved family, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the Board of Management, Principal, Vice Principals, members of the academic and the non-academic staff, members of the PTA executive body, parents and students of Macintosh Memorial Primary School, I would like to express deepest condolences to Mrs. Copeland and other family members of our past principal, Mr. Vincent Copeland, or Pap, as we call him. This is particularly a difficult time for you and we wish you courage, peace, and strength to bear this irreparable loss. Mr. Copeland's very impactful journey at the Macintosh Memorial Primary School began in September 1985 and concluded in August 2006, 21 years. Therefore, he was family, family to us too. Words, even the very best words, cannot truly capture the sense of loss that we are all feeling today because Mr. Copeland exemplified life, love, and laughter. Mr. Copeland was a great leader Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10 reminds us, Whatsoever thy hands find to do, do it with all your might. Mr. Copeland lived this scripture. As a principal, he took a zero tolerance approach to mediocrity. He found unique ways to assess us without us even knowing then giving us feedback, even if it meant reteaching lessons. He believed in discipline, hard work, and self-advancement. As members of staff, during his tenure as principal, it was not just about the academics. He took the time out to ensure that we also had time to de-stress, relax, and enjoy the best of life. And we will never forget all the hotel visits. He believed that his teachers deserved the best. He was down to earth. Many persons who visited the institution would pass him without knowing that he was the principal. He was always doing carpentry and a bit of gardening. Mr. Copeland was a gift to us, and many of the teachers he groomed are today leaders of the institution because he epitomized who a true leader was. He was a gift to this age, and this is why we want to think of his cheerful faith that will now rest in grace, unknown to laughter intellectual discourse and conviviality. We feel pain at his death. But John Donne and essays enjoin us to always scorn death. For death never wins unless the dead lived an unworthy life. Mr. Copeland has won because he has lived Life. David reminded us that God gives and he taketh. Who are we to question God's decision to take Papa home? We who are here should not worry about death, but the wrath of being forgotten after death. Because in the final analysis, we are not likely to be assessed merely by how long we lived on earth, but more importantly, by our contribution 
to the improvement of human condition and the fulfillment of our God-given purpose here on earth. Mr. Copeland did his fair share of contributions to make this community, this world a better place for our children and generations to come. He is not dead. He rests and we shall see him in the new Jerusalem.
Daniel 5, verse 11.
and relished having a few drinks with his friends. He loved cooking his favorite meals, curried goat, stewed pork, and manish water. <laughs> Going to crab bush with his friends was also one of his favorite pastimes. Augustus was christened in the Anglican Church and remained an Anglican throughout his life. He was a member of the All Saints Anglican in Refuge Clarendon as a youngster. In his later years, he became a member of St. Augustine's in Porus, Manchester. He also attended an Anglican college, Church Teachers College, where he received his teacher training. His three favorite role models in the church included Archdeacon Lennon, Reverend Orland Lindsay, late Bishop of Antigua, and his godfather, Mr. Walter Fletcher, who was lay reader at Refuge Church. As was previously mentioned, Vincent was a hard worker, and for this reason, he received several education awards throughout the years. Among these were the Prime Minister's Award for Service to Education, the Sydney Thomas Award for Improvement to School Plant, Ministry of Education Award for Meritorious Service to Education, the Gleaner Award for Contribution to Education, and the National Council on Education Award for Meritorious Service. Vincent served his country well. He was an inspiration to many young teachers and principals. As a graduate of Western Carolina University, he encouraged them to pursue further studies and to do their best at all times, regardless of the circumstances. The needs of the children should come first. In 2015, when Vincent was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, he told his wife that she was now his hands, his feet, and his brain. In his prayers, he asked the Lord that he would be allowed to continue as her companion for a while longer. This prayer was answered, and he spent seven more years with her. Earlier this year, they celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. He departed this life on October 31st, 2022, at 7.59 p.m. in the Mandeville Public Hospital. This was seven days before his 77th birthday. And so, we, the family of the late Vincent Augustus Copeland, would like to extend our deepest appreciation and gratitude for the many acts of kindness and expressions of love and care to us during our time of bereavement. May his soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine on him. Goodbye, guys. Trouble. Believe in God. Believe also in me.
brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. The reception of the body. family and the friends and to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage in your boundless compassion console us who mourn give us faith to see in death the, the gate of eternal life so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ of Lord. Amen. The opening hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. <laughs>
let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'd go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me.
A reading from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, beginning at verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not so be grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whether we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Loving, comforting God, at this time of bereavement and reflection and thanksgiving, we lift our hearts and our thoughts and our minds to you, looking to you as the author and the finisher of our faith. We look to you as our source of strength of life and health and all of human existence. Bless us now as we reflect and as we give you thanks for your continued goodness to us and especially to the family of Vincent Pope, who now and always we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. If you will permit me, I just make a few acknowledgments. Reverend Father Sean Nisbeth, with whom Mr. Copeland served at one point, is present with us. So is Reverend Caswell Burton, who upon the recently, whenever he saw me, would always ask about Vincent. Also, the Custos of Manchester, a gentleman I have known for a long time. Mr. Green and his wife, Mr. Green Costas brought the Lord into Manchester. The first time, this is the Apurus. <laughs> when did I put the Apurus? We first said a question. So I, I just acknowledge you gentlemen who were not previous well, the Costas was previous to acknowledge as we pay our last respects to the life and the work of yes. me as a lady there, what do you think? Who is there? Did you take one of the slogans? Because the MP is here, but the But you see, I work as a I don't know who understand what I know. It's a very good thing to do. We give it all that. And then we have a good thing to do. Yeah, we can have a good thing to do. Alright. I want to share with you for a few minutes. You will see the seed sowing and reaping. You would have noticed the reading from the original sin talks about sowing and reaping, and you sow, and it is only what you sow, you can reap. And in a way, it is very appropriate to have a food that you have a farmer. He loves farming like a serve. And the reading is grown within the farming analogy. And so we are, we are, we are reminded that we are being careful how we live as individuals. And as nations, what and how are our relations and our relationships with one another? Just last night, Jamaica and the world was rocked by the brutal 
slain of at least two persons in Taurus and the injuring of others because some wanted to sow to reap where they never sow. And unfortunately, that has become a general pattern in our country. But you know, friends, some of us as parents and relatives and friends are as cold as the teeth they know. Because some people, when they get the teeth in money, we know how we hook it up. You know, here we are, let's have to see this. Many of us are cold people, and we're going to reap what we sow. Paul's letter to the Galatians reminds us that we cannot deny God. Some of us think that we're so smart that even God we're going to deny, we're going to scam God. Even in the church, some people are trying to deny God. Right <coughs> Many of us are pretend Christians. Some of us are men pleasers. Some of us are Sunday go to meeting Christians. <coughs> but friends, Paul in his writing to the Galatian people said, the harvest of each of us will be dependent on what we have sown. <coughs> How have we treated others? We need to avoid impartiality and treat all with respect and giving attention especially to those who are in need. As a nation, we have been sowing some very bad seeds. Some of the seeds we have been sowing are seeds of hate, malice, discord, lies, theft, this unity amongst others. <laughs> and so many of our children and young people do not have wholesome examples sometimes. And hence, there's a general breakdown in law and order. I suppose many of us saw the video last week, I think, of the little boy who had trashed 200 teachers and the them at Homestead in St. Catherine. And all of us have all one take on it. But it suggests to us that as a nation, we have been failing our young people. As people who call themselves Christians, we have not been training them right. Because the scripture reminds us, when you train the child in the way he or she should go, in a way in the park. If you do the part, not so long. But we, very often as adults have not been good exemplars to our children and to our young people. And as we talk about sowing and reaping, there's a story I want to share with you about this chief executive officer of a big company. When he had reached the stage where he wanted to retire, but he wanted someone to succeed him as chief executive officer. What he decided he never wanted us, hand it over to one of his children, or one of his relatives. So he came up with a scheme. He called all the chief, the, the senior persons in the organization to a meeting. And he gave to each one of them a seed. And he says, go plant the seed. And in one year time, bring back what you have planted for me. So they are in the way, planting the seed. But this brother named Jim, Jim noticed that he planted the seed. But after three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, he not see nothing. So Jim said, but something all right. And he came to keep on watering the seed. And he went to him and said, yeah, go and water this man. You don't know, maybe one of them see what they're going to do. But when Jim go out, 
in the area of colleagues and say, Mark, Phyllis, you know, pretty, you see? It's it blooming nice. Jim could not understand what was happening. It went on until it came to the end of the year. The chief executive officer called all the senior executives. He said, come now, carry the results of your seed planting. Somebody didn't carry all kinds of something coming up to them back. And they put it on the table when Jim come in and then Jim see the whole back lands them. Jim said, what did they need to Because nobody didn't have to make up. But in my friend, coach, my brother said, look, carry the empty pad go. The man said, if you plant this seed and water, you can take care of it. And that you do. And at that, I feel the result. When the chief executive officer came in and he saw him said, boy, what lovely plants you all have here. But then he looked and he saw Jim, because Jim had a hybrid tree man running at the back of He saw Jim with his, he said, Jim, why you have it? Come, put it up here. So Jim came up and put it. So Jim had turned around and said, boy, he goes cool. And when he put it on the table, the chief executive officer said, Ladies and gentlemen, could you all stand and greet your new CEO, Jim? He said, the whole long one like that. <laughs> because a boy of the seeds that I gave to each of you, they could not germinate. Jim was the only one who was honest enough to water the seed. And I grow the seed, never spoke and go. He lived up to his obligation. Whatsoever a man Story. That shall be our story. And friends, I want to leave you <coughs> with the words of one of my, my favorite Jamaican songwriter and artist. And anybody, anybody here know a gentleman by the name of Keith Anderson? Who know Keith Anderson or know of Keith Anderson? Hmm? I didn't see him on the window at Bob and me. Keith and his name right there. But we call him Bob and me. Bob and me. Keith and his name. Was one of Jamaica's most prolific songwriters and singers. And Bob and me. Penned one of his songs called Fire Burning. Hmm? And hear what Bob says. I was drawn into myself. Observing all this time, from every angle I could see, my people, your meeting here. Brothers have turned to crime, so they die from time to time. We like to ask our leaders, what have you got in mind? I see the fire spreading. It's getting hotter and hot. The halves will want to be in the shoes of the have not. If the sign is on your door, then you will be safe for sure. But if you are in pretense, you're on the wrong side of the fence. Fire burning. And at the fireman today, I know we come from St. Mary, we're not killed that. But the fire is burning in Jamaica because we have sown to the wind and we are reaping the word with it. Friends, I can't imagine that the bottle of bread and candy might not be the one that has that bread. We are all in the furnace, and the only hope out of the furnace is to our relationship with Jesus Christ. That they walk up, they put one of the inside of the body. And when you did it, and when you are called upon to give an account of your life, what will you be able to say? Because I was going to say that the poor old woman, we put my hand with that. When this is like a soul for the man who wrote in family here, some of us are pretended Christians. Some of us want to look nice and look good and so good in the eyes of others. But 
but you don't see my if you are concerned. It is so difficult to see it, so that we may reap the rewards from our every part. What kind of seeds are you sowing? Is that what I have some more here? I have no variety, no kind of that. Children are so young, and they go in. Children, family members, may I say to you, be comforted in the fact that you had it for our last 77 years. Take comfort in the fact that he served not only you, but he served his community, he served his parish, and his reputation in various capacities. Now, as far as I notice, he did not escape you that you were in a certain club. <laughs> Mr. Copeland, I can tell you, even when he was the political representative of a party, he never brought his personal qualities into the church. He never did. As a matter of fact, when I was president of the church, was a man and a poor. And that was how he was. He served and he served in his own in imitable way. And so may I encourage you. May I say to you, take comfort in the fact that he has served, he has lived, he has sown, and God only knows that he will reap his own reward. So I say to us, let us who are left behind sow good seeds that we may influence others, we may encourage others, and we may lift up others to a higher level than we are there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the congregation to stand. Let us with confidence and hope confess the faith to which we were baptized as together we say. I believe in God, Father Almighty.
congregation to stand for the final commendation and farewell. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant Vincent with your saints. Yes, sir, and faith and no more. Neither sign, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to the earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created us, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia. He rests on Christ to your servant with your faith. We are and we are no more. And the sign of the last Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Vincent Augustus. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep people of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into your arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. During the singing of the recessional hymn and the third verse, the choir will lead the clergy party, followed by the casket, and we'll go through the south door to the burial spot, and the family and the congregation will follow in that order, please. The recessional hymn.
We have a problem, we have a problem with that, but we are doing the service as well. from heaven saying, write this, happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord? We are justly angered by our sins. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, Holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother Vincent Augustus, and we commit his body to the ground earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this, our brother, Vincent Augustus, and we ourselves may be found acceptably in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
Grant to Lord to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal, grant to him, O Lord, and that light perpetual shine upon him. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Workmen, your time and the choir going to sing now. And how long no part of the choir? When peace like a river attendeth my way.
more time, man.
So we gather over the infant school for the repast. Next door. So you can just make your way through the gate and take the right turn up. Yeah. Thank you. 